Sheridan was born and raised in the back garden of a kind old lady. It was a wonderful little garden and perfect for pygmy shoes. There was a fine hedge full of bramble, white horn and roses, with violets, primroses and robin run the hedge underneath. The lawn was a carpet of daisies, dandelions and clovers, with tiny tunnels sweeping through the tall grass. There was the best of food to eat and it was everywhere. Crunchy beetles, juicy wood lice, slimy slugs, dewy earwigs and spicy spiders. So I'm Shane Casey. I'm the author of two Dyslexia Friendly Children's books. I always try to write about nature that uh, I find in my own garden or local park. The nature I find when I'm out for a walk myself because that's the one that, that most people will, will encounter. That's the one that will inspire most people. The books are for all kids, whether you have dyslexia or not. The stories are aimed at, at engaging kids with the nature on their own doorstep, like I say. But we've uh, especially designed them for kids which have, uh, who have dyslexia. Um, dyslexia, as you may know, is a specific learning disorder. It's nothing to do academically, it's just a specific learning disorder that affects how you see, how you spell and how you read. And there's little things you can do in a book that actually makes it much easier for kids with dyslexia. The first and biggest thing is actually the, the colour scheme. So you avoid black text on a white background. So we went with uh, dark blue and, and green background which helps uh, quite a bit. It's also a spe uh, special dyslexia font. So if you can see it, it's much heavier on the bottom which helps ground the, the text on the page. Um, in, for some people with dyslexia the text actually moves around. Uh, the characters are all individually distinct. So in some fonts the letters I, J and L for example look very same. They're like strokes on a page where in this they're very very distinctive. Um, and then also um, in, so, in some words say if you have two letters O sometimes they can merge into one and that's very difficult to read whereas this helps to, to avoid that. Also the layout of the, the text as well. Uh, you avoid things like a double space after a full stop because that can create white rivers through the page. You avoid just to find text, so you leave a jagged in the end, so it's easy to see when the sentence ends. And you avoid putting the first word of a new sentence at the end of the line, because what happens there is they repeat the same sentence over and over again. So like we say, the stories are the same for everyone, no matter what, you, what child you are, whether you're old or young, they're the very same for everyone. It's just they're designed a little bit differently. But it actually makes it much clearer for, for everyone reading the book as well. Um, you've all this wildlife all around us. Anywhere you've got water, you've, you've got life. So you should expect to see insects, mayflies, dragonflies, butterflies. Any time you see a patch of light coming through the coming through the trees, you, you expect to find dragonflies and damselflies. Um, in the water, around the water surface itself, you expect to find stoneflies and caddisflies. All along the bank, you should expect to find plants where, that like getting their feet wet. So plants that are used to, to a bit of water. And then overhead, like I say, you've got all these tree creepers, you've got robins, wrens, chaffinches, blue tits all around us that give an absolutely incredible song right throughout today. Orla's school was on the river bank, not far from the hold where she lived with her family. Her classroom was under an old willow tree that overhung the river. Oh, it was magical. Its branches lazily broke the surface of the water, sending tiny ripples downstream. The leaves sang an enchanted duet with the gentle breeze, and as the sun rose above the horizon each morning, it cast a shimmering shadow on the water surface. Well, this area is actually managed for, for its wildflowers, so we've buttercups and clovers and, and all sorts of, of really, really colourful plants all around us and it's let grow quite high which provides a fantastic um, habitat for small mammals like pygmy shoes and, and wood mice. Absolutely beautiful. So when you're walking through the park as an adult what you see it depends on your, your line of vision. So up here we see open wildflower meadows surrounded by, by grassland but when you're walking through the park as a child well you're actually looking at uh, a perspective that's way down here but down around two feet from the ground so you see less of the big picture, but more the detail. And at this level, all your other senses start coming, into, coming to life. So you smell things, you can hear things, you can touch it, you can taste it. So you have a much different perspective from a child rather than an adult. And that's what I, I try to, to achieve when I'm writing stories for kids. It's what they see when they're walking through the park. And down here at this level, 
nature is full of adventures. Uh, and it's absolutely incredible. And that's what I try to, to gauge in our stories. Strangely enough, when, when people come to St. Anne's Park here, they come to get away from the, the hustle and bustle of, of the city. They don't realise just that uh, the park is actually much more active than any city ever is. They just don't see that. They don't see the um, little ladybirds chasing after aphids. They don't see spiders spinning webs. They don't see caterpillars munching on, on leaves. They don't see pygmy shoes tunneling through the, the grass. It's, it's, it's a fantastic area for, for wildlife and it's just so busy. Um, probably the, the, the busiest insects are certainly the one with the reputation for being the busiest here is the, the, the bumblebee, uh, as busy as a bee. Um, but I kind of got this sense, what, what if you came across a bee that wasn't very busy, that she was actually quite relaxed and laid back and instead of flying from flower to flower looking for pollen and, and, and nectar, what if she actually spent a bit of time with all the different flowers and started chatting with them and what kind of stories would those flowers tell? Um, do some flowers like to, to gossip? Do some flowers like a bit of chit chat? Um, are some of them great storytellers? So we kind of developed a little story about a, a very unusual bumblebee called Bombus Riley who, who loves to talk to flowers. And her favourite flower is Davin the dandelion because she's the best storyteller of all. You see, Bombus loved nothing more than to talk to the flowers. And the flowers loved Bombus because she was so friendly. Flowers, believe it or not, have lots to say but very few creatures take the time to listen. So while all the other bumblebees hurried from one flower to the next, without even saying hello, Bombas always took her time. She would ask each and every one how their day was going. The red clovers loved to chat, while the white clovers always had the latest gossip. But of all the flowers that Bombas visited each day, her favorite was Davin. Davin was the most elegant dandelion, with bright yellow petals and delicate green leaves and Davin had the most wonderful stories to tell. Sinan was scared. In fact, he was terrified, and you could hardly blame him. Indeed, most young birds are a little bit scared about flying for the very first time. But Sinan was a swift, and he knew that a swift shouldn't be scared of flying. Swifts are born to fly, and spend almost their entire lives on the wing. They eat, drink, and even sleep while flying. So for a young swift like Sinan to be scared to fly, well, that was a very strange thing indeed. You know, swifts actually don't nest in trees like most birds. They, they nest in the ease of, of houses. So when a little uh, young swift is looking over the edge of the nest, he doesn't see soft grass underneath him. All he sees is, is hard concrete. So uh, you can't blame Sinan for being absolutely terrified. But uh, the key to this was a, 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 a little young swift that was, that was scared doing something. and. I suppose the, the way around that was to, um, to try harder, because the harder you try, uh, the, the more likely you are to succeed. There's nothing wrong with being scared. Uh, being scared just helps you to kind of focus more on your, on your own abilities and uh, let the, the wind gather beneath your wings and, and um, just keep trying.